Hello wildflowers and welcome back to The Rambling Rose. I promised you a very magical episode and I hope you will be utterly enchanted by this one. It's all about the wonderful world of Australian bush fairies, imagination, books, art and childhood wonder. In this episode, I'll share with you my favourite children's book, some illustrations from my childhood, and answer the question, do I really believe in fairies? (laughs) We'll also be getting a little witchy and crafting a spell jar and painting a book plate for my new book, Wild Fairy Magic. So sit back, relax and enjoy this little fairy tale. Once upon a time, in an ancient land of platypus and pink bottle brush, desert pea and rainbow lorikeet, there lived a quiet little girl with a big imagination. She loved nothing more than to escape into fantasy realms. Books became portals to fairy kingdoms, where unicorns danced in butterfly meadows and dragons slept in caves of gold and gemstones. She loved books so much that she began to make her own. With her pencils and crayons, she told tales of enchanted animals and brave little Vikings, cities beneath the sea and exotic islands lost in time. This little girl was born on a day when the veil between the worlds was very thin. Where she lived, it was Samhain, All Hallows Eve, a night when spirits walked the earth at midnight Witches danced under the moonlight, and much magic and mischief was afoot. But on the other side of the world, it was Beltane, a time of flowers and sunshine and merriment, when Queen Flora set all the flowers alight, bursting with colour and joy. Being born in the month of May, she was a child of the willow tree, sensitive and artistic, deeply connected with nature and aligned with the emotional energy of the moon. Her very favourite book was Elves and Fairies by a most enchanted Australian cottage witch named Ida. Ida was born in the late 1800s and she was perhaps the first of her kind to really see the magic of the fae in the Australian bush. She sensed their presence in the fluffy yellow wattle flowers taking flight on the backs of willy wagtails and kookaburras and wearing little gumnut hats. The little girl was so enchanted by Ida and her beautiful illustrations that she dreamed of becoming an artist too when she was all grown up. But as is the way with so many children, the girl grew up and moved to the city and got lost in grown up ways. She saw that the world of man, of concrete and steel, was often sad and cold and cruel. And so her magical pencils began to gather dust as the little flower wilted under artificial lights, the brilliant sunshine far away and the enchanted forest and her fairy friends forgotten. But one day, many years later, she returned to the forest and sure enough, her fairy world was waiting for her as if not a minute had passed. Upon her return, she heard bells chiming and the soft sound of laughter on the breeze. Wild violets peeked out from underneath leaves, ferns unfurled their delicate fronds, and a patch of four-leaf clovers appeared. Recognising this sign that the fey folk were near, she closed her eyes and asked, Beloved fairies, please will you give me my name? She waited a moment, holding her breath, and the answer came sweetly on the breeze. Oh, the most beautiful perfume filled the air, and upon her return home, there, growing wild amongst the blackberry brambles and bottle brush at her front fence, a rambling rose. So, dear ones, I guess you're curious to know, do I really believe in fairies? Well, I certainly do, but not in the way you may think. Let's make a nice cuppa and have a chat about it, shall we? 
fairies, I believe, are multidimensional beings. In a sense, they exist on many levels. In one way, I believe they exist in our imaginations, in our stories and folklore, indeed our history and culture, and to my mind, what exists in the imagination exists, simple as that. Being a hedge witch, a clairvoyant, who jumps the hedge between worlds, it doesn't seem at all strange to me to consider that the things I see with my eyes closed, in dreams or otherwise, are as real, sometimes more so, than those I see in my waking world. But I also believe that they exist in a form in what we humans call our reality. I believe they are the spirits of the plants and we can see them with our imagination and our intuition, even communicate with them if we learn the language of the plants. Each flower, fern and tree has a spirit, its very own fairy that takes flight from time to time not only on the wings of our imagination, but on those of dragonflies, birds and butterflies, and all the lovely creatures of the air. Have you ever read the book, The Hidden Language of Trees? It is a fascinating book that tells of the intricate language that connects these living beings. At one point, when all matter was forming from star stuff, we were one and the same, and I believe we have simply lost the ability to hear them. But I also believe Deep down, we know in our DNA this language. Indeed, biologists, ecologists, foresters and naturalists all increasingly agree that trees speak and that humans can learn to hear this language. When we communicate with plant spirits, when we tend a garden lovingly or stop to smell a rose or whisper to a seedling, we are communicating with the fae. At least, that's what I believe. And the more we open our minds and hearts to this language, the more like the Fae we inevitably become. You may have guessed by now that I am deeply connected to my inner child and try to live my life according to the wishes of that little girl with the big imagination. As children, we can see and hear fairies because our minds are still open to the world of magic and wonder. When we see the world through the eyes of a child, we see all things with curiosity and the unknown becomes a secret door to a world of possibility. So I'm very certain that the fairies love it when we embrace our inner child. I will share more ways to connect with the fairies in future videos, but I thought it might be nice to start by crafting a spell jar to attract them into your garden and call in good luck and abundance. You don't need to have a physical garden for this spell to work, as the garden is simply a metaphor for life. If you tend to your goals with love and intention and offer your kindness and childlike curiosity to the fairies, you will be blessed with abundance. I will share this spell in detail as a printable page for my Patreon supporters, but for now, you can follow along as I make it. Spell jars or witch bottles date back hundreds of years and are still found buried under hearths or doorsteps or plastered inside walls of historical buildings all across Europe. In the jar, I'll place a little piece of citrine and green calcite, a sprig of thyme, three bluebell flowers, a pinch of allspice and three drops of patchouli oil and then I will seal it with lavender wax. This jar is designed to attract curious fairies wherever you place it. I can just imagine them peeking in at the sparkly crystals and pretty bluebell flowers, seeing their own reflections in the jar and leaving a scattering of pixie dust all over the garden, can't you? Now, this jar is best placed in the garden on a new moon so that the abundance grows over the half lunar cycle culminating in the full moon. However, any time when the moon is waxing is a good time to cast this spell. Being a poetic and terribly old-fashioned little green witch, I love to craft my spells in a rhyme. And this is what I'll say three times before I pop the spell jar in the garden. Beloved fairies, blessed be, spirit of flower, fern and tree, brilliant crystal, golden glow, with this spell the fae shall know. A gift of herbs, a pinch of spice, 
a rhyme to weave a spell so nice. I tend my garden lovingly and sweet abundance flows to me. Like roses after summer rain, my garden blooms again and again. Fruit and flowers come harvest time, such wealth and joy will soon be mine. Now, let's paint a beautiful book plate filled with some of the fairies' favourite flowers. Four-leaf clovers, bluebells, anemones and violets. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, I'll follow I always cherish writing my name in the inside cover of a new book, don't you? It feels so special, as if you belong to the book as much as the book belongs to you. I wanted to include lots of pages where you can write your own notes, journal, draw and even press flowers in this book, so you're filling it with your own unique magic. When I first began researching this illustration, I found anemone in a list of flowers beloved by fairies. I hadn't seen this flower before, but I thought it would be a beautiful addition, and so I began to draw it using pictures I had found in books. On a little break between painting, though, I wandered out to the garden, and my eyes were drawn to some white blossoms that had appeared, as if by magic, climbing over the back fence and all over what I call the grandmother tree. I couldn't believe my eyes because on closer inspection it was the exact flower I had started to draw only hours earlier. I had never noticed it before and I'm positive it wasn't there last year. I picked some clover from my front garden to study the pattern on the leaves before I started painting and noticed that the clover growing in the shady parts had the strongest contrast. I cannot say that word contrast, <laughs> I've been trying, <sighs> contrast. I so hope you enjoyed my Australian fairy tale. Perhaps it sparked some fond memories of your own favourite books as a child. Did you love to draw and paint when you were little too? I would love to hear from you in the comments and of course you can like and subscribe to my channel to show your support. Hop on over to Patreon to unlock bonus content or visit my website to purchase art, oracle cards or gift wrap. The Rambling Rose is filmed on Jait Matung country and it is with great reverence that I acknowledge the traditional custodians of this wild and beautiful land. Finally, I'd love to extend a very warm thank you to my founding patrons over on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed last week's printables and recipes. Your support means so much to me. Thank you. 
and this little rose will see you next time somewhere in the fairy forest. <laughs>